Hello, and we've a special news round today as we turn all our attention onto the White Sands Desert in New Mexico. For it's there in just a few minutes' time that the space shuttle Columbia will touch down after eight days in space and 129 orbits of the Earth. Well, with me in the studio is David Wilson, the BBC science correspondent, and at the Kennedy Space Center at Cape Canaveral is Reg Turnell, Newsround space editor who's been covering the whole mission. Well, all eyes now are on White Sands in New Mexico. Columbia is approaching it, having come into Earth's atmosphere, and has passed through the radio blackout. So we can now go straight to the pictures as they're coming in live from New Mexico. And there is Columbia in the middle of your screen. The American voices you'll be hearing are Jack Larsmer, commander on board Columbia. You'll be hearing too Steve Nagel, he's the Capcom talking from Mission Control, and Jack Riley, who's the NASA commentator. and speed brakes going to 100% now. There's um, just Three about minutes four minutes to touch down now. What you can see there Three is about uh, just over 20 miles away and about uh, eight or nine miles up in the sky. How much control do the astronauts have at this point in time? Uh, in fact, at the moment, they, they've been steering it down from very high levels, but of course, when they come into the landing, it's all totally automatic. There's one of the chase planes. From those pictures, we can see the weather looks fine in New Mexico. Yes, indeed. We've just heard the wind's down to not much more than 10 knots. Everything seems perfect. And uh, there is some very uh, light cirrus cloud, and you can just see it in the picture there now. Uh, but the uh, weather is very much better than it was before. Now, our shuttle now is coming down at uh, something over 10,000 feet a minute, I believe. It's coming down terribly steeply, although it doesn't look at it there. Much steeper than uh, an airliner comes down. Marvellous shot there. Turning right now into runway 17 at 20,000 feet. Airspeed 295. And it should be landing in about two minutes. Range 10 miles. From Houston winds 190 at 14. Wait for you go. Out of 15,000 feet. Two papi lines, Houston. Airspeed 275. Go for auto to inner glide slope. Go for auto at 12,000 feet. So as okay, Columbia nears the landing strip in New Mexico, we leave you with the pictures and sound of NASA. Columbia now in auto land. Out of 10,000 feet at 288. Body flaps and trail. Roger. Five thousand feet. Airspeed two eighty. Range about three miles. Three flares. Roger. thousand feet. Airspeed 292. Still in auto. Comes the gear. The mission elapsed time of touchdown uh, unofficially. 
So it's welcome home to Larsmer and Fullerton, and let us straight away call up Reg Turnell at Cape Canaveral. Reg, what's the atmosphere like at Cape Canaveral now that Columbia has touched down safely? Well, everybody's uh, very happy to have it down safely, but terribly disappointed it hasn't come here, of course. Uh, doubly disappointed, uh, because uh, Columbia came down with a tailwind. It still hasn't achieved the all-important cross-landing, that is to say, uh, landing in a crosswind and uh, it's not likely to land at uh, Cape Kennedy now until it has achieved the crosswind landing. Uh, those are the main feelings here. But they must all be breathing a sigh of relief because there were a few hiccups on this mission, weren't there? Uh, there were indeed quite a few hiccups, uh, and uh, the most important one, of course, was the loss of half of the communication system, uh, which uh, did uh, reveal itself earlier in the mission when they were uh, instructing them to close the payload bay doors an hour or two ago and they didn't get the message uh, until it was repeated three times. And how do you think Martin will be feeling at this period of time? Well, we seem to have lost contact with Reg at Cape Canaveral. Hello, Reg, can you hear me? Hello, yes, I can. And how do you think Lausmer and Fullerton will be feeling now? Uh, Jack Lausmer? How do you think the two astronauts will be feeling now that they've finally come to a halt? Oh, well, uh, very satisfied, of course, uh, because they've uh, had eight days in space instead of seven. Uh, Columbia has now got a total of over five million miles on the clock, as it were, and uh, they have, despite all the hiccups, they have achieved a great deal. They are claiming 100% success for the mission. I think this is stretching the truth a bit, but nevertheless, they have proved once again that Columbia is very reusable. Reg, uh, it's David Wilson here. Um, are they going to have any difficulty in uh, moving the thing out of White Sands uh, when all the yes, equipment's up at Edwards Air Force Base? Uh, the Rockwell engineers have fought very hard against this White Sands landing because, as you can see, uh, there's this gypsum dust there which will now be all over the all over Columbia's fuselage, in the engines and all the delicate reaction control systems. This has all now got to be cleaned out. The engineers much preferred it to come back here to the concrete landing strip. So it'll take at least nine days to get it out of White Sands, possibly two weeks, instead of the five days they hoped for at Edwards. Reg, thank you very much for joining us from Cape Canaveral. So there are the pictures of Columbia sitting in the uh, desert in New Mexico. The 100-man ground crew will now swing into action to make the craft safe. And in at least half an hour's time, Lysma and Fullerton will appear in the New Mexico daylight. So for the third time in less than a year, Columbia, the world's first reusable spacecraft, has landed safely. Astronauts Lysma and Fullerton are home after eight days in space. So, from David Wilson and myself here in London and Reg Turnell at Cape, Cavana Cape Canaveral, we'll say bye-bye. Roger. A thousand feet. Airspeed 292. Still in auto. 50 feet, gear coming. Comes the gear. Gear down.